By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And welcome to the Tribal Wars. And you're probably thinking, what are the Tribal Wars? Well, it's a tournament that I've organized here on Timmy Talks. I do that all the time to thank my patrons and channel members for their support. So I organize these little events. And this was called the Tribal Wars. And I challenged all the, the patrons and channel members to make a deck, uh, choose a tribe and make sure their deck had at least 12 creatures of the chosen type. For example, if you've chosen Walls, that's a deck type of Colin. That's what Colin's playing in the, in the match today. You have to make sure that you have 12 Walls in your deck at all times. So also after sideboarding. Now to make sure that we could just have a lot of different tribes, I've included Fallen Empires and Homelands uh, in the sets that they could pick cards out of. And I've also included Ice Age, with the exception that with Ice Age, you could only pick creatures that would fit into your tribe. So for example, you can pick uh, the, the Yeti that's in the deck if your tribe is Yeti, but you could not pick a Jester's Cap because a Jester's Cap wouldn't be part of your tribe. It would just be a useful card. So you couldn't pick that. And um, when you're listening to this, maybe you're thinking, whoa, this is really confusing. Don't worry, uh, check the description below because there you can just read about the rule set if that's something that uh, is of interest to you. Basically, the idea of the whole tournament was just to have a lot of cool tribal decks and I've decided to make some videos showing you some of the cool tribal decks that were played in this tournament to maybe, you know, inspire you to also make a tribal deck and to kind of show you how cool tribes can be also in old school. Now, uh, in this matchup, we're going to have Colin. Like I said, he's playing Wolves. He's going to play Joe, who's on Kobolds, and his deck is called the Disposable Zeros, which I think is a super, super cool name. Um, and before I go to the deck tech section, I would just like to point out that, as always, you can also skip all of this and you can just go straight to the games. The easiest way to do that is by checking out the timestamp in the description below. The timestamp is called MTG Games. If you click on there, it'll take you straight to the games. And as for now, I'm going to continue with the deck tech. I've got beautiful deck photos of both of these decks. I'm going to start with the deck of Joe, the Kobolds. And here we see the deck of Joe. So it's called Disposable Zeros. It's just a really fun deck. I mean, if I'm looking at this, it's so cool. It's a Metallica kind of looking uh, a letter type, right? So that's what it reminds me of. And we're seeing that this deck is blue and red. So of course, red because Kobolds are red. And Maybe it's nice to kind of discuss where that name comes from, the disposable zeros. That's because uh, three kobolds are zero to cast. We've got Crimson Kobolds, Crookshank Kobolds, and Kobolds of Kirkkeep. They're all zero to cast. They're all one creatures, and they count as red creatures, basically. That's that's all there is to it. So that's what they do. Now, what do you do with an O1 creature? You're going to try to pump it up, of course, because it's, it's nothing by itself. So that's why we have the Kobold Taskmaster in this deck. That's, of course, also a kobold that reads other kobold creatures you control gain plus one plus oh. So it's gonna kind of pump your army a little bit, but it's still quite modest. So that's why he's also playing with Unstable Mutation. Of course, the Enchant creature from blue, one blue to cast, plus three, plus three. So that's gonna pump those creatures a little bit more. And then he's playing with a lot of direct damage. So when I'm actually looking at this deck, I think that Joe can win matches just by direct damage alone. And we see four Chain Lightnings, four Lightning Bolts, two Fireballs, and four Psionic Blasts. So that's tons of direct damage. And that direct damage, especially those Fireballs, are very risky for the opponent because Joe is also playing with uh, Ashnot's Altar. Now, Ashnot's Altar is an artifact from Antiquities. Sacrifice a creature, gain two mana. Now, when your creatures are zero to cast, you can just play out your whole hand, sack them to the Altar, gain like, I don't know, 10 mana, 14 mana, maybe even 20 mana, and use that to uh, build a huge Fireball and kill your opponent on the spot. So that's definitely a possibility. Now, I think in this matchup, because his opponent is playing Stasis, this is a pretty good matchup for, for Joe because he doesn't really need that much mana. So he's fine if there's no untap step. You know, oh, I cannot untap. He can still play out his creatures, meaning it's going to be really tough for his opponent to have that Stasis Black Vice Lock going. But, be, you know, I'm going to go to the deck in a moment and I'll show you and you'll see exactly uh, what I mean. So I, I, I think... There's a pretty good chance for Joe to win this. I'm also liking the inclusion of the Howling Mine. So Howling Mine is going to make sure that he's going to keep drawing new ammo, right? Because when everything that you have in your deck is so cheap, it's really easy to kind of play out your entire hand and then you've got nothing. So in Magic, you need card draw. So Howling Mines are quite important. It's also quite risky because like I said earlier, his opponent Trout is playing, uh, sorry, his opponent Colin is playing with Stasis. So, um, you know, Stasis decks also love to draw a lot of cards. You know what? Let's take a look at that deck and then I can, I can show you what I mean. 
And here we see the deck of Colin, right? So his tribe is Wolves. And when you pick Wolves, it makes sense to combine them with Stasis, right? I thought, or you're going to go with Millstone or with Stasis, or you're going to go with an Animate Wall plan, which is pretty cool, but also pretty bad. So I think if you choose Wolves, Stasis is probably your best option. Now, let's first kind of look at his tribe, right? So he's chosen to go for Wall of Swords, Wall of Air, and Wall of Spears. Now, I think it definitely Wall of Swords is, in my opinion, the strongest wall in the core set. So, and then Wall of Era is, is a close second. So it kind of makes sense that from that point forward, you start thinking about a blue-white deck. If you play blue-white, you're gonna play control. So this makes sense, right? Stasis is of course the key in this deck. Stasis, the famous enchantment, one blue and one to cast that reads, skip your uh, untapped step. So everybody skips their unta untapped step. Nothing gets untapped anymore, but you have to pay one blue every turn to keep your stasis around. If you cannot uh, pay any blue mana anymore, it's going to destroy itself. Now, that's why I think Howling Mines are so important in this deck, right? You're gonna, you wanna make sure you keep drawing enough blue blue lands, blue sources, so you're gonna make sure you have Howling Mine in there to give you extra cards, making sure you can find that blue mana and you can kind of keep playing and keep winning the game, basically. And of course, the lock in this deck is Stasis and Black Vice in combination with Howling Mine. So Black Vice, it's an artifact for one, it's gonna punish the op opponent for having more than four cards in hand. So for example, if you've got seven cards in hand, during your upkeep, you're gonna take three damage from Black Vice, right? And this is ideal when you've got stasis out because you wanna play out cards as the opponent, but you can't because your lands don't untap anymore because of stasis, so you're gonna have a full hand and then you're gonna get punished for that because of the Black Vice that your opponent has on the board as well. So if Colin, sorry, if, yeah, if Colin can have uh, his Black Vice and his Stasis on together with the Howling Mine is going to be, you know, super tough for for Joe. But then again, Joe, of course, is playing with a lot of zero casting cost creatures. He's playing with a lot of burn, like Chain Lightning, Lightning Bolt. It's only one red to use. So he can still, like, hurt his opponent. So I think a key card in this matchup and a key card for Colin is going to be Ivory Tower. Ivory Tower is kind of the opposite of Black Vice, right? You pay one and you gain a life, so it's an artifact for one, and you gain a life in your upkeep for each card in hand above four. So if you've got seven cards in hand, you're gonna gain three life. If Colin can manage to get out an early Ivory Tower in combination with Howling Mines, and he's gonna gain so much life, it's gonna be near impossible for Joe to catch up with that, you know, because he's gonna get through his, his burn, but his burn won't be as impactful because, you know, Colin is gaining tons of life every single turn. So I think for Joe, the goal is to make sure that the Ivory Tower doesn't find its way in the game. And once it's on the battlefield, that he finds a way to get rid of it. And I think for Colin, his goal is to try to find it Ivory Tower as quickly as he can. So I really think Ivory Tower is going to be a key card in this matchup. Uh, let me know what you think, by the way, in the comments below. What is your favorite tribe and why is it your favorite tribe? I would love to hear from you. And I guess uh, we've looked at both the decks, so that means we're ready. Let's go to the match. Game number one, here we go. We have Colin sitting on the right with the uh, Walls deck. And on the left, we have Joe with the Kobolds deck. And I believe it is Colin on the play here who gets to start. There we go, with an island. Ivory Tower, oh! This is already, well, I mean, not devastating for Crouton, man. That's Joe, by the way, but a problem. So there's an early chain. So he's going to drop to 17, but next turn, I mean, he's only going to gain one life, of course, because he was on the play. So he's going to go up, uh, back up, I believe, to 18 right now. Yeah, there we go. So he's going to go up to 18, going to draw another card. I think if you're, if you're Colin, what you want to do is make sure you can play out a Howling Mine right now. That would be ideal for him. Plays out of the strip mine. Another tower, also pretty good. But I do believe he's got just four cards in hand now. He's going to take care of that mountain. Now, again, of course, um, Colin doesn't know what Joe is playing, and Joe doesn't know what Colin's playing. So he's like, I'm just going to take care of, of a land that's got to hurt you. But of course, we know that Joe's playing Cobalt, so he doesn't really mind as much um, about losing a land as a normal deck would. That being said, it looks like Joe cannot find another mountain, plays an island, and those mountains are quite important for him. Look at that, uh, Colin doing nothing, probably wants to get those ivory towers back online, tapping two here, using a city of brass. There's the first Taskmaster, so a one-two kobold that's gonna get the other kobolds in the deck of Joe, plus one, plus zero. We don't see any follow-up kobolds though, and um, two life here gained by Colin because he's got five cards in hand. And maybe, yeah, he's just going to do nothing. I think if you're calling, you just want to tank a lot of life here. There's another mountain. 
There's another Taskmaster, so they're going to give each other the pump. So an attack for two, that means he's going to drop to 18. But of course, he's going to gain four life, I believe, next turn. So he's going to go back up to 22. This is going to be super tough here for, uh, for Joe to try to keep up with his life gain. So look at that. So he's on 22 at the moment. Yeah, this is going to be really tough. There we see a Plains. I, I think if you're calling, you don't really have to do anything yet. I mean, Joe can at least attack for four. So that's going to make sure that uh, Colin's going to kind of stay on the same life total. It's going to drop to 18. Does he have some burn maybe as well? He's playing with four side blasts, four chain lightnings, four lightning bolts. We haven't seen one of those zero casting costs, kobolds, by the way. And there we see uh, Colin again gaining the four life. So going back up to 22. I mean, this is tough. This is really tough. There's an island tapping three. Okay, there's a Wall of Swords. That's actually quite good because the Wall of Swords is going to stop both of the Taskmasters. Wall of Sword, a card from Antiquities, three to cast, a 2-3 Wall with First Strike. And I believe this is a 4th edition copy, I think. There we see an Ornithopter, an O2 Flyer for zero. And there's a Fireball on the Wall. And he's going to attack. And this is not ideal for Joe because, of course, we've seen Joe's list. He's only playing with two Fireballs main. So ideally, he wants to keep those Fireballs for a big Astronauts Altar burn play. Um, but yeah, he has to get rid of the Wall of Spears as well. So I do understand this display. But I'm sure if you're Joe, you would have hoped to find maybe like a Chain Lightning or a Lightning Bolt to kind of kill that Wall of Spears. And look at this, a Wall of Swords 3-5 Flyer. Yeah, this is really tough for, the, for Joe. Only two cards in hand. I do believe I see maybe a Howling Mine there. He doesn't want to cast it because it means more life for Colin. But yeah, this is really tough. And I think I think Colin's got this one already in the back because now he's just going to gain a lot of life from the Ivory Towers waiting for his, uh, you know, Black Vice, his Howling Mine, his Stasis to get all that going. And then he's eventually going to win the game. But it, it, it may take long, but I think eventually he'll win it. And now it's up for Joe to try to kind of find a way past that Wall of Swords. I mean, if he can draw into his other Fireball, and he is playing that Howling Mine now, understanding that it's important that he does something, because if he does nothing, it's just going to mean more life for Colin. But if you're Colin, you don't really mind drawing into more cards. And that's, of course, a hard decision for Joe to make. If, 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 if I don't play out the mine, he's just slowly going to gain a lot of life and I'm going to lose. If I play out the mine, he's going to gain a lot of life really quickly. But maybe I can find something to turn the game around. So I do understand his philosophy. Here we see a wall of air by Colin. So it's looking really good for Colin here. Hey, there's the first Cobalt. Zero to cast. Well, the first zero casting cost Cobalt, I should say. There's a Shatter. Okay, that is pretty good. Those Shatters can take care of some of the Ivory Towers. At least taking care of one of those, that really helps. And we see that Colin at the moment is going to go up. So he's on 23 at the moment. And so that little 01 Cobalt is now a 2-1 because of the double Taskmaster on board. There's another Wall of Air. Yeah, this is tough. Tough for Joe. And finding another Ornithopter. I mean, if he can find an unstable mutation, uh, he could unstable his Kobold of Kirkkeep, and it would be a 5-4. A that would be kind of funny. But he's got to find it first. Even if it's a 5-4, then, of course, Colin can just double block it on a Wall of Air and a Wall of Swords, and he could kill the Kobold and just lose one of his Walls. And in the meanwhile, of course, the life total of Colin keeps going up and up and up. He's now on 24. There is another Ivory Tower. So three Ivory Towers in total in the deck of Colin. We've seen them all three now. So that's kind of unlucky for Joe. There is another Mountain. Going to tap two blue, it seems. What is he going to do? Ooh, are we going to see a Brain Geyser or a Fireball? There's a Brain Geyser. Counterspell, though. Oh. That is unfortunate here for Joe. Again, he had to take the risk. Let's see what Colin can do. Going to go up here to 26 and draw us two cards for turn. The Howling Mine's still there. I mean, all, all Colin really needs here is a Stasis and a Vice. 
I mean, stasis would be ideal right now because Joe's tapped almost everything. It looks like he cannot find a doe playing a wall of sorts. Looks like he's a little bit in the tank trying to make his next move, make the decision. I don't expect a stasis because if he would have had a stasis in hand, he wouldn't have played out the wall of sorts. Maybe he's got a vice and he's thinking, should I play out the vice? And I believe this is a pass here to uh, to Joe. So Joe's got two cards in hand. Going to go do four now because of the Howling Mine. And every turn, this is going to take longer for Joe to kind of deal with the Ivory Towers. The harder it's going to be for him to eventually win the game. There's just a pass. So this is unfortunate for Joe. We see Colin gaining even more life, going up to 28. This is pretty brutal. And there's the pass here for Colin. So I think Colin's just waiting to draw into some vices and some stasis. There's another Cobalt, another 0-1. So it's a 2-1 because of the double Taskmaster. So all his Cobalts gain plus 2, plus 0. There's a tap for three. There's a side blast. Yeah, trying to like hurt Colin a little, but it's not really gonna work, is it? Because look at that, he's even gaining more life than was lost because of the side blast. Gonna gain six life. He's now on 30. Yeah, this is those those ivory towers are super problematic for for Joe. I think the good news for Joe is that he now knows what he's playing against. So he can put all his artifact hate from the sideboard into his main board to try to take care of those uh, of those ivory towers. There we see a wall of spears being played by Colin in a pass. There's another island. And just a pass again. More life even here for Colin. Look at that, he's on 36, is insane. The question here is when is he gonna draw into the stasis vice lock like he could play he could tap his two white and one blue to play out the stasis and a vice that would be ideal i don't believe that joe is playing with any counter magic so colin doesn't have to worry about that of course colin doesn't know that so maybe he's waiting for the right moment tapping a white here there's a source to plowshares on one of the flyers so that's an interesting move maybe just playing that because he doesn't want okay there's the stasis interesting yeah exactly i would i would oh he's doing oh he didn't want to play the stasis okay now I, I was a bit confused because of how he tapped his mana so he's playing a mana short this is ideal and then his stasis is coming next turn this is a big this is a big deal here for for colin and it, it's a good play because with the mana short you know for sure that even if joe has counter magic he cannot counter the stasis that colin is playing out so this is very well played by colin if he's got a vice now, it would be even better playing out a blue land for turn. So for the upcoming seven turns, he can pay uh, play, uh, pay for the upkeep cost. There's a Howling Mine. Okay, this also makes sense. He wants to make sure that he can draw into, uh, into a vice. So three cards here for Joe. I mean, Joe needs kind of a miracle, right? He doesn't have any enchantment hate. I mean, the, the stasis is not even a problem. The problem are really those ivory towers. Another Howling Mine. Okay, so now everybody's just going to draw tons and tons of cards. Yeah, this is going to be so, so tough here for Joe. Because remember, Colin has the double ivory tower, so he's going to take so much life every turn. He's already on 40. He'll be on 50. He'll be on like 100 in no time. And even worse, it's going to help him to find his vice. Again, I understand the move by Joe because you got to do something. But for Colin, this is an ideal scenario. Tapping one blue, are we going to see a vice? We're going to see a vice. There's a black vice. And now I think the game is going to be over very, very quickly. Now, remember, I mean, Joe has a lot of cheap casting cost creatures, so but he's going to take the first points of damage. going to drop to 15. Going to draw four cards. 
I mean, I'm sure a lands in there. Okay, there we see some some zero casting cost creatures, the disposable zeros, the Ornithopter, another Cobalt, and a Lance. I mean, he is able to, to play out three uh, three cards, even though he's got zero mana. So that is pretty impressive. He's going to tap the land, going to take a damage, drop to 14. It's kind of hard to see his life total, but he's on 14. There's a Chain Lightning on the wall. I mean, you got to do something. I get it. You got to do something. And of course, emptying your hand is good because it means you take less damage from the vice. Even more life for Colin here. He's going to take his turn. He's got to pay for the uh, for the stasis, though. There is another island. Exactly, paying for the stasis now. So it's untap, upkeep, draw. He's paying for the stasis. Going to tap another blue, another vice. Yeah, this game, this game is pretty much over. But for now, of course, for, for Joe and maybe also for Colin, you get some more information about the decks. Discarding a Swords to Plowshares. Three damage here for, uh, for Joe is going to drop to 12. Or perhaps it's four damage that makes more sense because there's a double vice out. So perhaps he was on 16 and he took four damage. That would make sense. There's a Chain Lightning. I mean, you do you do what you can, right? If you're Joe, you do what you can. And it looks like there's a pass again. So Colin's going to go six life up again. How many life does he have right now? 32, 38, 44, 45, 51. He's on 51 life. He's got the double vice. Only two blue, though. Okay, there's another... Okay, there's a planes. Okay, so maybe if... if if Colin's unlucky, and Joe's lucky, he cannot keep up the um, the stasis for, for long. He only has two more blue. Then again, I'm expecting him to find more. There's another... <laughs> oh, look at that. Another Black Vice. Does that mean nine points of damage for Joe? I mean, I'm not sure how many cards he's got in hand. Let's take a look. He was on 12. Yeah, he's going to go to three. So he, he had seven in hand, so... This is the last turn here for Joe in game number one. And then both players are going to go into their sideboards. And I'm sure if you're Joe, you're just going to board in all your artifact hate. And also, of course, your red elemental blast. Yep, yeah, that's it. That's the game number one. But maybe this match is really, really going to start now. Because now both players know about each other's intentions. So we're going to leave them to sideboard. And we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So let's see if Joe can uh, can deal a lot of damage. I can take care of those ivory towers here in game number two. At least he's on the play, which is going to give him an advantage, starting with a Cobalt. And uh, is he going to tab the red? No, he's not. He's passing the turn. There we see a Soul Ring and a Howling Mine. Really good start for Colin here. This is what he wants to do. Quickly get that Howling Mine out. I wonder if Crouton Man can maybe find a Taskmaster to start dealing some damage. There's a Bolt on the life total of Colin, dropping to 17. Unstable Mutation would also be quite nice here, but he's just passing the turn, so Colin's going to draw two. There's a Plains. And, okay, there we see a Wall of Spears. There is another blue. Tapping. Are we going to see a chain lightning on the wall of spears? Interesting. Does that mean that he's got some way to pump maybe the cobalt? No, it does not. Passing the turn. Maybe if I would have been Joe, maybe I would have just gone, just purely focused on that life total. Maybe. I don't know. Of course, I don't know what else is in hand. Of Joe, there was a quick pass by Colin. By the way, just played a land and passed a turn, so he's giving Joe kind of the momentum. But now he's got to take advantage of that, though. And it looks like it looks like he can. He's just passing the turn. There are no Taskmasters, no unstable mutations, no direct damage. There we see another island here by Colin. 
who's of course quite happy with the standstill. <laughs> it looks like we see a third player in the game. That's kind of funny. Yep, there's that hand again. Oh, putting a dice in, I like it. Anyway, we see a City of Brass here by Joe and a pass. Colin playing an ivory tower. There is a side blast. I mean, it's really tough playing against an ivory tower's live game, but we do see now that Colin is dropping to 13. I think Joe's got to find a way to end this match fast. There's another red. Come on, Joe, you can do it. You need a taskmaster. And I'm rooting for Joe, by the way, because I always like to see... Okay, there's a Shatter on Ivory Tower. I always like to see a third game. So that's why I'm rooting here for Joe. There's a Shatter on the Ivory Tower. No counter magic by Colin. So that's good news for Joe. But again, Joe cannot find a way to kind of pump his, his Cobalt. So now you just have a 0-1 Cobalt. Unable to, to put any pressure on the life total of Colin. Colin still being on 13. Finding a Swords to Plowshares is p uh, playing a Swords to Plowshares on that uh, Cobalt. That is a, that's a little bit surprising. Two cards for Joe here. And I believe Joe's still on 20, by the way. But we see, uh, <laughs> we see Joe's kid taking care of the dice management. Anyway, there's another Cobalt. And a pass. Yeah, I mean, Joe's unable to put pressure on. That's the problem here. I wonder what he's got in hand. Another island by Colin. I mean, it's just a matter of time before he starts playing playing a wall or playing a stasis and all that stuff. So there we see a wall of air and a vice. I don't think that vice is going to hurt Joe too much. There's a bolt. I mean, look, look at the life total of Colin. He is now on 10 already. So that is something. Oh, there we see a mana short. That also means a damage here for Joe from his own City of Brass. Has to tap that City of Brass as well. Exactly. Going to take a damage. Oh, he's going to counter. It's going to counter the mana short. Is he? It's, it's a little bit unclear to me now what he's going to do with that. Red Elemental Blast, because he could use it as a counter for the Mana Short. Yeah, I think he's used it as a counter for the Mana Short. Exactly. So that was played in the upkeep. So that means, yeah, he's one red down. And this, of course, is, is, is really good news for Joe. And can he now find... Some more burn, or at least an unstable mutation or a taskmaster to kind of, you know, get that kobold going. But I'm now looking at the wall of air. What he just needs is direct damage. I mean, let's be fair. Collins on 10. You just got to burn him out. Going to draw the two cards for turn. Going to play out a mountain. I mean... What can he do? Counting his lands. I think I think if I were you, Joe, I would kind of give up on the dice plan. I would ask I would ask Colin to keep track of the lives for both of you guys. I I believe Joe's still on twenty. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he's on eighteen. His life total actually doesn't matter as much. You know, because either Colin has a lock or doesn't. I think Colin's life total is far more important. He's on 10. There we see a side blast. So he's going to drop to 6, right? I mean, that is far more important than the, than the life total of, of Joe here. Because once, once Colin has got the lock, he's got the lock. There we see another mana short, I guess, because he's tapping 3. Yes, he's going to play another mana short, which is really, really important for, for Colin here. Because he's, he's you know, he's on 6. There's a mountain. Are we going to see some burn here? I mean, if he's got a bolt or a chain, he could, he could bring Colin down to three. 
I guess he doesn't. He's passing the turn. Of course, uh, Colin also has counter magic. We haven't seen any counter magic from his side. And I'm sure he also boarded in some blue elemental blasts. So even if Joe can find all the burn he needs, he's not there yet. You know, he's got to find, he's got to wait for the right opportunity. There's the stasis though. Oh, Bolt here on the life total. Colin's going to drop to three. Oh man, this is so exciting. There's the other vice. And now the life total actually does matter for, uh, for Joe. So he's on 12, as we can see. No, he's on 17. It looks like he's not going to take any damage yet. There's a City of Brass. Does he have burn? Does not. He's passing the turn. And because, of course, because of the stasis, nothing is going to untap. And Colin will have to pay one blue every time, but he's got more than enough blue over there. There is another Howling Mine. There is another mountain. And an ornithopter as well. So he's got two mountains now. And it looks like a pass. Just a pass turn. Oh man, you're so close, Joe. You're so close. And yet so far away. I mean, if Colin can now find a tower, his life will be back up in no time with the, the, the Howling Mine on the board. Remember, both players are drawing three cards a turn. And I mean, I just got this feeling that Colin has like a blue elemental blast in hand as well. There is another Howling Mine and an Ivory Tower. Okay, there is that Ivory Tower. I wonder if we're going to see maybe a detonate or something. Looks like Joe is taking some damage here. Going to drop to 15. Going to draw four cards. If there's a land and a Psy Blast... Okay, Ornithopter, another Cobalt. That's not what we need here, Joe. Another land. He's got four lands. It looks like just a pass. Oh, this is devastating. Only three cards in hand for Colin, so he's not taking any life now, but now he's on seven cards in hand. So next turn, he'll start gaining some more life. There's also a double vice on the side of Colin. He's going to tap a blue. Another vice, three vice. I believe five cards in hand for Joe. Tapping. Okay, there's a spell bus. He's destroying the stasis. Does that mean, can he, for example, play a huge fireball? Again, it would be risky. It's going to drop to 12 because, you know, if Colin has, for example, a blue elemental blast in hand, there's a bolt. Are we going to see a blue? Nope, that's it. Okay, he's winning the second game, and I'm so happy. Why? Not because I'm a fan of Joe's deck or anything, but because I want to see game number three. And now we're going to see game number three. Very exciting stuff, and uh, good luck already for Joe on that dice management in game, uh, game number three. Game number three. So we've got Colin with the Wolves deck on the play because he lost that second game, but I do think he's got really good papers of winning this match because he is on the play. That makes a big difference because that means he's the first person that can kind of start the game plan, maybe find that ivory tower. But I mean, we'll just have to see how much time he needs to get his whole prison lock going. And if he can give Joe a chance to kind of make his burn plan going. So there we see Colin starting with a soul ring into a Felwer stone. Tapping the stone, is he going to do more... Maybe a vice, turn one? No, he's not, just passing the turn. There we see an ornithopter and a mountain. A lot of glardo on the thopter, but we know it's an ornithopter, O2 flyer. And Colin here, four cards in hand, 20 life. Both players still on 20. Joe's got five cards in hand. There we see an island. There's a Howling Mine. Okay, so, I mean, that, that's what I like about this matchup. Both players playing with Howling Mine, so they're just playing a lot of cards. There's an early Ivory Tower. Remember game one. A Bolt here on the life total. 
of Colin. Now Colin only has two cards in hand, so it's gonna take a while before the tower gets active. But remember game one, that tower was devastating for Joe. And when you've got a burn deck, you don't want to see any life gain. There we see a Cobalt Taskmaster, so a 1-2 and a double Cobalt. So those Cobalts are now 1-1 one, one creatures because of the Taskmaster. So that means next turn he can start dealing some damage unless, of course, uh, Colin can find a wall. And he's got 12 of those in his deck. So I'm expecting a wall of swords or a wall of spears. Maybe if he can find another blue, a wall of air. So Colin playing a second blue. Are we going to see a wall of air? I mean, every every wall would be good. Tapping four. There's a wall of swords. A three five flyer. Tapping one blue. There is a vice. And just one card in hand for Colin. So he's not gaining any life yet. Crouton man. Three cards in hand. That's Joe, by the way. Those are their nicknames. So Katfu Ninja is Colin. <laughs> Crouton man is Joe. And uh, Joe's on the play, passing the turn. That is a good news for Colin here, but bad news for Joe. So Colin is kind of like starting to get his lock, getting more cards in hand so that he can get his ivory tower to go. Only three cards for Colin, so Colin is probably hoping for another Howling Mine. Joe playing a Mountain, that's it, it seems. Or can he find... Some burn. Doesn't have blue, doesn't have access to unstable mutation or psionic blast. We haven't seen any unstable mutation, by the way. Perhaps he boarded those out after the first game. That could be an option. Haven't seen Ashnot's altar as well. So there are still bits of up the deck of Joe that we haven't seen. So maybe he can show that here in game number three. There we see Colin going up to five cards in hand and passing the turn. That means that next turn he's going to start gaining some life off of his ivory tower. There's a city of brass. On the side of Crouton Man. Oh, there's a Shatterstorm from the sideboard. Can we see a counterspell here by Colin? That is the big question. What a good Shatterstorm. Going to take care of the Howling Mine, the Ivory Tower, and the Black Vice. And of course, that Ivory Tower is the most important thing. And before I forget, also getting rid of the Mana Rocks, the Soul Ring, and the Felwer Stone. So this is huge. He is going to destroy his own Ornithopter, but I'm sure he's quite fine with that. Wow, what a play here by Crouton Man. So he's going to lose the Ornithopter, but he's destroyed so much. This is devastating for Colin. At least Colin still has his wool. There is another blue. And a Mox Pearl. Tapping the Pearl. Another Ivory Tower. And a Wall of Spears. And a pass. And also just a pass here by Joe. And Colin going up to three and passing. So it's going quite well here. If you're Joe. There we see a Psyblast dropping Colin to 13. So it's up to Colin now to really quickly find a Howling Mine. I mean, he's got the defense with the Wolves, but he also knows that he's going to be burned out. If he, if he gives Joe too much time, he needs to get his life gain engine going with the Ivory Tower. He needs a Howling Mine, preferably two, or perhaps a Brain Geyser to refill his hand. But he needs to get some card draw going. Tapping. There's a Fireball. Oh, and this is a surprise. He's going to do that on the Wall of Swords and not on the life total of Colin here. So he's really hoping to attack with this Kobold. So perhaps next turn we're going to see a Bolt or a Chain Lightning on the Wall of Spears. Colin tapping three. There is a Wall of Air though. That is bad news for Joe who was finally trying getting rid of that, uh, of that Wall of Swords. There is a Mana Short. That is good news here for Colin. He's buying himself some time, which is crucial. And with the Wall of Spears and that uh, Wall of Air, he's got the defenses up again. Tapping. Ooh, there's a Stasis. A great mo moment to play out that Stasis, of course, after that mana short. Crouton Man's in trouble. 
And it's so tough for him to kind of find a way through the defenses of Cullen. Of course, he can just do an alpha strike. You know, but that will be devastating for him. There we see another island for Colin. Tapping. There is a vice. Oh, this is looking worse and worse for Joe. Of course, Joe not taking any damage yet because he's, uh, I believe he only has one or two cards in hand. Okay, four cards in hand. So that's more than I thought, but still, he's not on the damage train yet. He's quite high in life. Also, he's on 19, I think. Only took one damage from his own City of Brass. And if you're Colin, you just want to get your cards up in hand so you can start gaining some life. Ooh, paying another blue. Needs to find a blue source. Found an island from the top of the library, it seems. Super important here for, for Colin to keep finding those blue sources, which is going to be tough because there are no Howling Mines in play. And Howling Mine is just the key card in these type of decks. Ooh, finding a Plains. Another vice. That means two points of damage for Joe. Joe doesn't really care about that, I guess. Ooh, he's going to take a damage first. Going to tap three. What are we going to see? A psionic blast on the life total here of Colin again. And Colin dropping to nine. And I do, I do think it's a better strategy to just put all your direct damage on the life total on Colin. I understand you want to get rid of his walls and attack with your Kobolds, which is noble, a noble aim. But I think purely from a game perspective, it's better just to point all your direct damage into the direction of Colin's life total. So Colin, of course, now cannot pay the stasis. Untap, upkeep, cannot pay the upkeep. Stasis is going to die. So ev all the mana remains tapped on the side of Colin. This is devastating for him. Next turn, Joe can untap everything again. That's exactly what's happening right now. Let's see what Joe can do. I mean, if Colin can just survive this, or are we going to see a huge fireball? Is he going to burn him out? Oh, there's a the fireball. Wait a minute. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. Yeah, nine. Fireball for nine. That's it. Oh, that's it. That is just devastating for, for Colin. You know, I think, Colin, you just had bad luck. It is really tough to play against these burn decks, but uh, I think it was, a, it was a really close match. I think both of you could have won. And uh, thank you for bringing your decks to the table. This uh, this was a very entertaining matchup. Thank you both. And also thank you for watching another game right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And uh, before you go, I'd like to ask you to do a few things. Please take a moment to like this video, to share, to subscribe, to do all that stuff. It's completely free and it really helps the channel move forward. And then there's one more thing I would like to ask you to do, and that is take a look on the Timmy Talks Patreon page. You can find that on patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. And there you can find out how you can become a patron of the channel and sponsor uh, sponsor the channel, sponsor what I do, and uh, if you become a patron, you also get access to the Timmy Talks Discord, and you can join all the Timmy Talks online events, including tournaments like this. And you can get all that for just one dollar a month. Um, oh, and before I forget, your name will be also mentioned uh, in the end scroll. What end scroll? This end scroll. What shall we do with the Somebody can see.